I'd like to ask the city clerk to please call the attendance roll. Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Donahue? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Ackley? She's online. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Okay, thank you. Alderperson Phillips? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Present. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you. Would the clerk then please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When you focus on the good, the good gets better. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our 19th meeting uh, held on January 4th. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is uh, mayoral appointment. Uh, Attorney Adams. There is one appointment from the mayor, sending the following appointment for your consideration. William Bolson to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill a vacancy with the term expiring on April 19, 2021. That will lay over. Um, thank you. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. There's no one this evening. Okay. Then we'll go on with uh, a presentation. Uh, the 2021 State of the City Address by Administrator Todd Wolf. City Council, um, Mayor, City Clerk, City Attorney, and Department Heads, proud to present. All right, <laughs> thank you. Today's, today's uh, quote is actually very, very astute for today's uh, presentation. When you focus on the good, the good gets better, and I'm just going to kind of go over the city of Sheboygan State of the City, our 2020 uh, quarters three and four update. And then we're gonna also talk about the 2021 strategic plan overview. So as they would say that, you know, the best time to become the city's city administrator is during uh, a COVID <laughs> pandemic and uh, budget time. So it's great times. So next, when we talk about our prior state, I wanted to kind of emphasize one of the items that I talked about during the Todd on tour, and that was the, uh, our prior state de decades of limited investment in valuable city resources. So I'm gonna start with our number four, which is our roads. We all understand that with our city, our number one constituent complaint is how we take care of our 200 plus miles of roads. We talk about our number three, which is our infrastructure, <coughs> buildings and, and ERP system, which is our enterprise. These are areas that we just definitely have to invest in. Our number two is our fleet, our, not just our buildings, but our fleet as in our um, you know, fire trucks, police cars, our, you know, all the utility vehicles that we use within our cities for our city services. And then our number one, which is our most important, is our employees, our biggest asset. Next. So when we talk about prior state-led 
uh, it's led to the following issues. We've had communication issues. I think that's number one. We've lacked an adequate internal communication between and within departments. It's something that we strive to, to improve. Our permissions, these are things that we've identified. Inadequate, improper, and mismanaged permissions. Now, why is that? It's, to, it's more of the fact that nobody's really looked into how does the process work. So it's not something that was done deliberately. It's just something that's been done because of the lack of, of tools and training. Approvals, limited consistency and or oversight in numerous approval area processes. Again, it's not something that's deliberate. It's something that's been done um, just from an oversight perspective. Documentation. These are things that, I follow, that we found we lack adequate documentation in numerous processes, procedures, and in a number of areas. Again, t it takes time to document how you do things. Inefficient processes. One of the things that I keep explaining to, to people is that the city, which is, we are a great city, but we're just like any business. We don't always have time to focus on how we do things, so we just get it done. That's part of the problem. Cultural issues. Leadership failures and mismanagement led to the stagnant, apathetic, and internal culture. This is typical in business that I've seen in my life, in my career, but it's also very prevalent within the city. This took decades to build this situation, and change will correct this um, as we work on this together. Next. When we talk about our core values and focus, I think this is something that is just amazingly um, brilliant, the way we've put it together. So we, put it, we built it into a, what's called a stairs approach. So these are the values that we work with our department heads and employees with on a day-to-day on a -day basis. Everything that we do, we want to focus on our, stair, on our values. So obviously S is for service. Service is internal and external. These are things that we should be focusing on. Whether we're elders, internal department heads, or employees, working together internally and externally. Our teamwork, again, teamwork, it sounds simple, but it, every day we work together as a team, whether it's one department helping another or elders helping um, constituents. It takes a team to make everything go, go smooth. Accountability, it's something that typically is very difficult with it when, when you talk about companies. And the city is like a company, and accountability is something that also helps our employees to understand that we are responsible for everything that we do. We're accountable for everything that we, we every process that we, uh, we do on a day-to-day -day basis. <clears throat> I is something that we actually have to work and focus a lot harder on as a community, and that's innovation. We've been so stagnant in so many of our ERP systems and technology systems that we really need to work for, further to improve that, and we are in that process. Respect, again, that's internal and external. Respect is something that we should be doing for each other, our constituents, our team, our team leaders, and our employees. And then S, one of the most important ones, is obviously stu good stewardship and fiscal responsibility. These are things that everybody takes for granted, but we as a, as a city, we are focusing on these on our day-to-day -day, um, pieces. These are great values, and I think that's something that we really need to focus on. Next. So when we talk about our core, core values, it, these are things that are drivers for the city's mission to steer towards our city's vision. Next. They help us to provide service and to, our, to our strategic plan and focus areas and the goals that we have set forth. Next. It helps us to improve and innovate services provided to, a, to our residents on a day-to-day -day basis. Next. It helps us to ensure tighter fiscal, <coughs> fiscal and um, process controls as we, as we work on our <coughs> core values daily. Next. It helps us to create the gold standard for operations. And this is something that I strive, strive for for the city of Sheboygan is that I want every business in our, in our community to look at the city of Sheboygan as the gold standard for operations, whether it's fiscal or process-oriented. 
Next. And I want to see the city of Sheboygan become an employer of choice. And that's, again, if we take care of our systems and our processes, have good stewardship, and we take care of our number one asset, and that's our employees. Next. Part of our strategic plan is obviously our city's mission. Next. And in, in achieving our city's mission, using our core values, that ultimately helps us to achieve our city's vision. And these are things that we'll be addressing in our, in our upcoming strategic plan. Next. So when we look at it and we put it all together, our strategic plan is really focusing, number one, on our core, va core values. Those core values are our stairs approach and helping us to achieve our mission and our vision that the city and constituents have chosen. <clears throat> Next. So when we look at 2020 quarters three and four, I first, the first thing that I implemented when I first entered into this position was uh, what we call the TOT, Todd on Tour. So I met with all of the employees, or at least tried to, and I met with all the shifts, all the departments, all of, all of the uh, facilities that we have here at the city. So I introduced myself, explained to them that I'm honest and upfront, whether they like it or not. I provided them with history of my private sector and city involvement. I'm, I provided them with management philosophy and how I look at developing our employees and making them better at what they do. We're only as strong as our, as our weakest link, and that's, that's something that we need to understand. Also focused on our process improvement, our ability to perform with Lean Six Sigma, and also change is coming. Next. The next thing that I did was working with our team was the overdue cultural changes, empowering employees to make improvements and provide better services. These are things that are very important in my opinion. So our employees know many, know many of the areas that need improvement, which have fallen on deaf ears over the years. There is a level of excitement as change is happening, but with change comes apprehension and concern. Next. So the next, the next port, part that we started to look at is course correction. And that's something that I, I focus on is when you understand where you are and where we need to go, we need to make changes. So part of the course corrections is making sure that people understand that these are, these are changes in a positive way. So doing nothing with regards of making a decision is not the not the perfect decision. Creating no decision or progress is the worst decision that can be, that can be made. Next. So one of the biggest concerns that I had is eliminating the status quo and having somebody say, well, that's the way we've always done it. And that's just one thing that just irritates me, if you can imagine that. So we need to listen, communicate, and help make positive change and affect our, operati our, our standard operating procedure. Next. So when we continue to look at this, one of the statements that I've said, and a lot of people say I have, I have a plethora of Toddisms, but it, basically the statement is, is if, if you see something, say something. So many people have been here for so long, and it's a great thing, but it's also the fact that they've, they're also so used to doing things the same way they've been doing them because it works. And just because it works doesn't necessarily mean it's the right process. So my concern when I first started was that many, thing, many have been in, in survival mode and that they are proud, with the, proud of the processes that they've established over the years. They have not been given the resources and time to correct the processes. Another concern is the fear of doing something wrong. We have great employees. We have great direct department heads. Nobody wants to make a mistake. If it works, why change it? And that's not really the thing that we need to do. We need to make change to improve our processes because sometimes the information that we're doing isn't necessarily needed. Next. So one of the next steps is empowering the employees to seek positive and proactive change. This is about working smarter, not harder. Not focusing on a, 
focusing on pointing fingers, focusing on fixing the process to benefit all. Next. The last, the last part of, of this is basically declare Sheboygan officially open for business. One of the things that we have to remember is, you know, with COVID, it has slowed development down. But we also have, have upset some of, of the developers and business, businesses within Sheboygan that we are difficult to work with. So one of my focuses, along with our team, is making sure that people understand we are open for business. And that is, that's something that we, we strive for. Next. So there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all by Peter Drucker. So many people don't realize how, how strong that statement is. But we're good at a lot of things very efficiently. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the value of that efficient process is giving us something that's needed. Next. So we're going to talk about investment in employees for 2020, quarters three and four. Next. Part of our investment in, in our number one asset, which is employees, is the realign, realigning employees' work focus to support our STAIRS core, core values, as we discussed earlier. Next. Collaborative job description revision accurately uh, uh, reflect duties performed. It's been many, many years that the job descriptions have been updated. So a lot of people, we need to balance the job descriptions, make sure that the departments have the balanced amount of work. And that's again, part of teamwork, part of uh, service, part of using innovation, making sure that we're working smarter, not harder. It's also making sure that we're not doing things that are, that are low value or no value. Next. So the next part of it was the development of the position, goals, and personal development. This is something that we implemented in our annual review. And that's basically asking for our employees, our team members, how do you feel you're doing? And what would you like as far as tools, resources, and what goals do you have to help them be successful in the future? Next. Next step was initiating employee training, collaboration, and team, team building. These are things that will be ongoing in 2021 and into the future as we continue to build our team and make sure that everybody's working more collaboratively versus in silos or islands, as I call it. Next. Next, we're going to be improving communication, <clears throat> creating synergies between departments. Again, I, I've seen that the city which is a great city and we have a great team, tend to have lot, like islands where we don't communicate very well, even though you might be next door to each other. Next. Our annual employee evaluation and survey forms and revisions. And this I actually have to apologize because with everything going on, we did do an employee survey and we were not able to, at this up to date, provide that information back to the employees, and that will be coming out in first quarter of 2021. Next. So investment in employees continued for 2020. So we talk about restructure. So part of the restructuring was finance and human resources department realignment. We all remember the CLA report. Well, it's taking it to that next level. So decades of long overdue consideration and change we provided first employee picnic also, which attempted to reach 100% of the staff, formally 14%. So when we think about restructuring, it's not just what we're doing in finance, but it's also employee involvement and what, what have we been doing to, help, to get the employees involved with each other. We also increased the employee appreciation gift by $5 to $20 and added the clarity of usage and requirements. So again, because the employees re had given us information, we need, we need to listen to them. If we're going to give them something as a benefit, we need to listen to them why the benefit had less value. Next. So revamp. We started to, to perform audits and document decades old and non-existent policies and procedures. 
identifying uh, segregation of duties and checks and balances. Again, as you heard me say before, it's not deliberate. It's just one of those situations that over time, people took on responsibilities that they really shouldn't have had. And it's not fair to the employee. So all efforts provide direct support to Munis Upgrade, previously completed in 2017, utilization and external project management by Baycor. Support for this and future upgrades. Again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to teach our, team, our teams how to actually be project, project leaders within, within our system so that we can teach people how to fish versus giving them a fish when it comes to our upgrades. When it comes to our ERP system, we should be doing an upgrade every 12 to 18 months versus every several years. It's just, it's a big elephant to, to bite off of. Next. So when we talk about retooling, so we, what, some of the parts that we put together was establish uh, cross-training protocols. Again, when somebody's on vacation, things shouldn't stop. Provide coaching and mentoring opportunities. Again, we coach and mentor every day, but really we want to take that further. We're trying to help build a team and help everybody to be successful. Help employees develop growth within their positions. Again, that's part of our annual review, and it's also through coaching and mentoring. Create career paths for those that desire future growth. Again, it's understanding what, what your team wants. If you have somebody, you want to make sure that you help them to be successful and then all, everybody will be successful. Ensure healthy working environments. We've also instituted a Go365 health and wellness program, and we're hoping that that takes off um, in a positive way. We also initiated a, a core lean team, and we've already been successful in performing some uh, process improvements um, with some of, the, some of the programs that we have in place. Next. So invest in employees. Always treat your employees exactly as you want them to treat your best customers. Stephen Covey. We have to remember part of our number one core value in, in our stairs approach is service. Next. Investment in our business infrastructure. If you've always, if you've always done it that way, it's probably wrong. Charles Kettinger. Um, I can't say it any more than that. It's, it says it for itself. There's so many things that I've had people say, but Todd, that's the way we've always done it. Doesn't mean it's value added. Doesn't mean it's something that we need. Next. So when we talk about investments in business infrastructure, 2020, quarters three and four, since 2017, the strategic plan focused on the overdue infrastructure improvements in the, in the city. Significant investment in the city's internal business systems and technology infrastructure, a component of the city's overall infrastructure has been severely lacking for decades. These critical elements are pivotal for city staff to provide best services, which our residents deserve, continue the city's progress towards the strategic plan, core values, its mission and vision, and guarantee the city's future success. Again, when we think about it, technology is something that we really should all be in, in, um, embracing. Look at with COVID-19, we wouldn't be here talking virtually if we didn't invest in technology. So we're very lucky. So as far as a, an overview investment in business infrastructure, we put a timeline together. So since July of 2020 through December 2020, we started out with information and business systems assessment. Next. We went into the current vision Munis ERP support ending in 2021. So when I came in, it was identified that our present um, ERP system was no longer going to be up, uh, managed and maintained um, as of the end of December 2021. So that meant that we had to get the ERP upgrade in right away. Next. The AS400 system is outdated significantly. We knew that we needed to get off of that, but that system is actually involved 
and integrated into many departments, whether it's police, fire, DPW, um, city clerk, HR. I mean, it touches everyone, but it's very old technology. Next. We brought in and contracted with Baycor, Baycor Group for project management for a business and information systems upgrade. Again, they are actually helping us to help ourselves for the future. And they are the project leader for multiple ER, ERP system upgrades. Next. We defined our AS400 migration planning and we started to actually migrate and take things off of the AS400 and bring in other sources, whether it's using Munis or bringing in other modules that we'll be able to take and get us off the AS400. Next. During 2020, third and fourth quarter, we also brought in additional laptops, computers for additional um, capabilities working um, remotely because of COVID-19. And a lot of that was um, also benefited because of the CARES Act money to help us. Next. Virtual connectivity for municipal court and numerous conference rooms. Again, because of the CARES Act dollars, we were able to increase our capability for virtual um, communication and meetings. And we were able to assist the municipal court by having virtual meetings for them for their um, attendants. I don't want to say defendants, but the <laughs> next. EAM software exploration, that also is a, a huge program that will be helping us with our DPW. That'll only take about 5% off the AS400, but it, again, every little piece takes a chunk of it off. Next. Neighborly loan software, which you got, the council will, be see, will see the contract coming through very soon. That is something that we are requesting for the implementation and collaboratively managed by the city development and finance department. It is only a 2%, but our loans um, have been an area that has uh, created a lot of strife, not just internally, but externally. Next. Munis version 2019 test scripts, scripts or procedures. And we are presently in the process of doing the testing. So compliments to all of the departments for the overtime and the extra hard work. And I can literally say blood, sweat, and tears. Um, just because, again, everybody is doing this above and beyond what their daily duties are. So compliments to everybody. Next. Next item is the MS uh, Microsoft Office upgrade phased in, um, phased in over two years. We actually, some of that was actually pushed out to 2022, and we've been able to pull that back. So some of the upgrades um, already occurred already in 2020, and in 2021, we should have everybody, believe it or not, on Microsoft 2019, finally. We're on 20, 2010 right now. So again, we're behind in our technologies. Next. So again, investment in business infrastructure 2020, it's very important that people understand many of these long overdue investments in the city internal systems infrastructure continue into 2021. As I've said before, 2021 really needs to be an internal focus on how we do things and our efficiencies. So several of these projects are multi-phased and will support further exploration for efficiencies and help the staff work smarter, not harder. Again, innovation is the calling card of the future. <clears throat> Next. So when we talk about 2020, quarters three and four, we also talk about the COVID-19 related items, upgrades, infrastructure for safety, upgraded cleaning pr protocols, disinfecting fogging machines, not just for city hall, but for DPW and for transit. Filters to improve internal air quality were available. Next. Mead Public Library provided additional tax levy to support library operations in, for 2021. Next. 2021 budget 
again, completed fiscally responsible budget during health pandemic for key leadership change mid-year, maximizing closure of the TIT 11 and the ER and ERP. And we, we did leave some tax levy on the table because that meant that we would have had to raise our taxes even higher. Next. Human resources development restructuring. Again, that's ongoing. Process procedures review, benefits upgrade, and audit. Staff changes. There's been so much going on within our human resources department. Next. Employee survey updated. Inter Interdepartmental communication team revised annual survey. Results to be presented in first quarter. And again, I apologize. As I had stated in my <clears throat> Todd on tour, we are going to be transparent. We are going to bring that forth. And we are going to have discussions about it. But unfortunately, because of timing and um, all of the projects that we have in place, we haven't had a chance to actually present it. But that will be coming. Next. Fire department contract negotiations, the tentative agreements have been reached in December of 2020, from what I understand, and it will be presented to council in real soon. Next. Process control audits. Again, reviews began in 2020. Some processes, controls not reviewed for decades. Streamlining and strengthening controls continues in 2021. Again, this is not deliberate. This is something that is ongoing and something that we will, we will improve and help our employees to protect um, our departments. Next. Finance, finance department restructuring. Again, like human resources, there's been a lot of changes going on in finance and in human resources. Again, we did our, our audit, our pre-audit and documentation processes and procedures implemented efficiencies, mentorship with a, uh, with a consultant, which is a great asset. Our staff changes and additions have continued to be, have been very positive. Next. So looking forward in 2021, without continued growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement, and success have no meaning. Believe it or not, Benjamin Franklin. Next. So when we look at 21, 2021 strategic plan, 20, 2017 through 2021 is the, is the strategic plan extension. I, I'm going to be asking for a one-year extension from our, our current strategic plan, which runs through 2021 and extended into 2022. Completion of the 2021 projects and initiatives outlined in the 2021 budget and CIP. Next. 2021 professional and strategic planning. Build upon the current focus areas, additional diversity and inclusion. Promote Sheboygan as a premier community, both business and residential. Next. 2021 plan for, for 2023 strategic plan. Utilization of, of professional services to properly engage residents and create a comprehensive 2023 through 2027 strategic plan. Again, for a community of our size, we really need to invest in a, a very professional strategic plan to help us communicate and get more information from our constituents in where do they want us to be for our vision so that we can devi define our mission and we can make sure that we utilize our core values to achieve those expectations. Next. So when we look in the 2021 investment in employees, again, our number one asset, position analysis, non-represented non -represented employee position duties reviewed by external agency. So in the, we're in the process of sending out our job descriptions that we've uh, had revised and making sure that they, they actually make sense, that they're accurate, that the balancing is correct, and then we're going, and then we're going to move forward on that. Next. Team development and customer service. Again, service is our number one stairs. 
uh, value. Training and, and practice for dignity and respect and inclusion for internal and external customers. Again, there are so many things that we need to in, in, include when it comes to team development and, and our customer service as a, t as a company and city. Next. One of my favorites, process improvement auditing. Again, continue documentation progress into 2021. Next. Employee training, another area that needs significant emphasis on. Expand employee training and be, to become ongoing effort for knowledge and growth. This is not something that should be a one-off for 2021. This is, should be something that employees have time within all of the departments so that they can continually have training and development to help them run and operate their departments more efficiently and effectively. Next. Succession planning. This is one thing that I, I really think is a, a huge deficit within our city. We shouldn't be waiting for somebody to retire. We should be planning on people to be successfully retiring from the city, from our, from our, from our business, and making sure that we're not leaving ourselves with a big void. Having succession planning is also the fact that you understand where your weaknesses are, your strengths are, and making sure that we have a plan so that we have overlapping ability so that when somebody's leaving, somebody's coming in, and there's a transition of those um, tribal knowledge can be absorbed and understood. Next. One of the things for, that excited a lot of the employees for 2021, and which was a very large benefit, and we are thankful that the, the uh, council was in acceptance of this, which, which was the HSA contribution, which was reinstated in 2021 for active employees only. Next. So when we look at 2021 internal infrastructure, and we, we go from the top down, ongoing user training, ongoing scheduled upgrades, we look at MUNIS, expansion, integration, utilization of owned and unused modules. What does Todd mean by that? There are so many modules that we actually, as a city, as a company, own, and we haven't had the time and resources to actually turn them on and use them efficiently and effectively. So we're going to be starting that process in 2021. The AS400 migration, again, the goal is to get off of the old technology and get into the Tyler Munis, which is our ERP system, and or utilizing additional modules that work with the Munis technology. Next one is the Munis upgrade, which we are in the process of testing for the Munis upgrade, but that's just the base, base functionality. After that, we will get into the actual upgrades and the, the actual improvements that are in the um, Munis upgrade of 2019. Next one is departmental Munis super users and project leads, coaches, and cross-training. This was what I consider new to the city, but it's something that's very important and I see a lot of success because there's a hierarchy. There's the ability to create and institute team building within the, the different departments. By having super users and coaches, when there's a problem, the problem is reviewed by multiple people and it's not just one person by themselves trying to figure it out. Next. So 2021 investment in infrastructure. It is like a web, which is what you're supposed to see in the background there. So neighborly loan software launch, collaborative efforts between the city, de city development and finance departments providing users with, on with online interface. Again, we have so many loans out there with businesses and residents that with this new system, they'll actually be able to go online if they choose, and they'll be able to actually check how, you know, how much do I owe, what are my payments, how much have I paid, all of that online versus calling and asking. Again, it makes us more efficient, helps them to be more efficient. Next. Shifts, shifts in awards focus. My predecessor was very involved with awards, as we all know. 
For me, it's more of a shift focus to, in, to internal process control management. I don't need an award to tell us we're successful. What I need is processes and daily activities to be successful. Next. Fleet management review. Again, we spend a lot of money on our fleet. One of the things that we'll be looking at is making sure that we have alternative me uh, methods for financing, purchase, disposal, and management of our fleet. And there's multiple types out there for that. Next. <clears throat> we'll be looking at maximizing alternative funding sources. Tighter budgets lead all departments to seek and fully exhaust alternative funding sources. Again, working smarter. Next. Delinquent personal property tax management. Create and establish a, a process. Again, this is an area that has caused a lot of strife internally and externally with our, with our citizens. Next. Our EAM selection. This is a process that's going to be very, very helpful um, on multiple levels. It's continue vendor review and planning process for 2021 implementation. We've recently uh, had the demo for the second, second option. This, is, this EAM uh, program is going to help us with inventory, management, maintenance. It's um, going to tell us where our assets are. It's, 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 it's very exciting things. Next. EAM implementation, this is, this is the part that I need everyone to understand also because we'll be talking about these, these projects for quite a while. It's estimated that that process alone will take upwards of nine months to, to complete. One of the most significant and revolutionary investments in the city's internal infrastructure begin in 2021 and complete in 2022. Again, I look at it and say it's a 5% reduction in the AS400, but truly we're adding a lot of benefits that we don't have today. What do we have for assets? What, what do we do for ma maintenance, management, things like that? So these are things that are gonna make us more efficient at our day-to-day -day practices. Next. Mu Munis Code Enforcement Module Launch. This is, a, this is a actual module that we have, and in the past we actually looked at it, we as a city, and we did not like it at that time, but the updated version is something that's um, going to help us. So we're looking to utilize previously purchased ERP, ERP module to streamline operations, direct interface with Munis financial platform, and this will be a 10% reduction off the AS400. Again, our goal is to continuously chip away at the AS400 technology. So when webs, when spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion, a African proverb. Again, everything that we do within the city is like a spider web. Next. 2021 new initiatives. So in 2021, we're looking to support our stairs core values and substantial investment in our business infrastructure and employees, the city will begin utilizing our lean principles to identify the, the and remove waste. Lean will improve the city's services, allowing employees to work smarter and provide residents the best possible outcomes. The best thing about lean is it doesn't cost anything. It's a process, it's a philosophy, it's continuous improvement. Next. So 2021, new initiatives, EAM, Enterprise Asset Management. I've touched on that quite a bit. It integrates our GIS to work and work for work order systems, manage resident requests, asset management, preventative maintenance, and track distribution and, and limited resources. Next. Significantly improves the level of service our residents uh, request monitoring in real time, save time and expenses, reduced travel time to, lo to locate tools and equipment, data, manuals, <coughs> data information is accessible in real time and um, to technicians in the field. So I use the example as we have an accident, somebody knocks down a, uh, 
a power pole or a light pole. We send DPW out there. They have to drive out there to look at it, see which one it is, see what the electrical schematic is, go back to DPW, get the information, go back out into the field, and then they can make the, make the repair. This will all be able to be done via an iPad or some type of a tablet. Next. Asset conditions and assessments, depreciation con and conditioning tracking, and real-time, timely, and informa informative data for budgeting and capital planning. M one of my most exciting pieces to the EAM is the ability for us to have a better handle on our strategic planning when it comes to what our assets life is, how much we're spending on our, our, on our assets, and what the lifespan is so that we can plan for the future on some of these um, changes. Next. So the last one, best one of all, to provide the, to provide the best level of service and efficiencies which the city of Sheboygan residents deserve. The city needs to invest in the training and technologies to make these expectations a reality. Have a dream, define the plan, make it happen. By yours truly. So in closing, I just want to say thanks to Carrie for this presentation and support. I also want to say thanks to the city department heads and the employees, our number one asset, for this progress and growth that I've been able to go over tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation, Todd. Are there any questions? Then next we'll go on to the mayor's announcements. I just want to start out and say thank you to Todd for the great work that he's been doing in the short time he's been with us in the administrator role. Of course, he had a leg up because he spent many years as a council uh, president. But uh, it's just amazing uh, the business uh, education that he's bringing to the city and all the changes that we're making in a very positive direction. Today is Martin Luther King Day and a day when we celebrate Martin uh, Luther King's legacy and honor and his sacrifice. Celebrating his birthday gives us time to reflect on our rich culture and history of African Americans here in America. It also allows us to appreciate those people and things in our life that we're most grateful for. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired the human race to strive for love, peace, and harmony amongst all people of all color. In his words, and dedication to equality continue to inspire us today. Today I've got uh, some retirement certificates to present. First of all, I'd like to call up Kurt Rosser. Uh, Kurt grew up in Sheboygan County, graduating from Woosburg High School in 1986. After high school, Kurt enrolled at UW Oshkosh, where he earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice while working at the Appleton Police Department as a CSO. Kurt was then hired by the Sheboygan Police Department in May 29th of 1990. During this time with the department, he had the opportunity to serve as a DARE instructor, emergency response team operator and team leader, field training officer, crime scene reconstruction unit, honor guard, peer support team, and MEG unit investigator. In 2005, Kurt was promoted to lieutenant, was assigned at the MEG unit commander. He was selected to attend and graduated from the United States Drug Enforcement Administration's Drug Unit Commanders Academy in 2005. He was later transferred to the Criminal Investigation Division as a lieutenant. Kurt was selected to attend the 129th Administrative Officers Course at the Southern Police Institute in 2013 and graduated as a Dean Scholar. Uh, recognition uh, of earning a grade of A in each of the graduate courses that he was enrolled in. On August 4th of 2014, he was promoted to captain and assigned to the Criminal Investigation Division. 
Kurt has a long record of achievement within the department and has led or contributed to numerous process improvements within our investigative division. Additionally, he's well respected throughout the county and the state. He has been commended repeatedly throughout his career for his compassion that he demonstrates to victims. He has a strong sense of humor and an easygoing personality and is appreciated by all. Kurt shared with me that he is grateful to everyone in the department for the positive impact that they have had on him in his career. And he is proud of the work and grateful to have the, had the opportunity to work with everyone in the city of Sheboygan. Chief Domogulski told me that he is grateful for the leadership, the service, and hard work that Kurt has shared with the city and his department. His leadership, his willingness to take on challenges, and the strength of his relationships throughout the state and this county have uh, helped him to improve our investigative capabilities and eliminate silos and improve collaboration. Kurt, on behalf of the city, we're thankful for your 30 years of dedicated service and the positive contributions that you've made to the police department over this time. Please accept our best wishes for a happy retirement. And I'd like to give you this certificate of appreciation to Kurt Grasser for his uh, 30 years of dedicated service from May 29th of 1990 through January 29th of 2021. Kurt, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you, sir. Next, I'd like to call up Cameron Stewart. Cameron Stewart grew up in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, graduating from Fond du Lac Goodrich High School in 1985. After high school, Cameron was enrolled at UW Oshkosh, where he earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and political science. He then attended the Law Enforcement Academy at Fox Valley Technical College, graduating in August of 1990. Cameron was hired by the Sheboygan Police Department on December 3rd of 1990, and during this time in patrol, Cameron took on the additional duties as a field training officer, emergency response team member, and was the original member of the gang crimes unit that later became the street crimes unit. Cameron was an advisor uh, for the department explorer post and served on the Board of Park and Forestry and the City Building Use Committee. Cameron was promoted to detective on November 11th of 1998, and as a detective, he worked closely with the Sheboygan Fire Department, the State Fire Marshal, ATF as an arson investigator. He served as a law enforcement rep on the U.S. Attorney's Training Committee and the Sheboygan Police Department Peer Support Team. And finally, he has served on the board of the Sheboygan Professional Police Association and the Benevolent Association for over 20 years. Cameron's personal file is filled with department commendations to numerous dimension. He told me that he has been a, it has been a true honor and privilege to serve beside all the members of the Sheboygan Police Department as an officer and a detective for the city of Sheboygan and will miss most of the camaraderie and friendships that he shared with each of them. He is grateful for the opportunity to become a member of the community, provide service to the community, and have the opportunity to raise his family here. Chief Domogulski told me that he was grateful for the leadership, competence, and professionalism that Cameron has molded through his career. He is easy and going and approachable, and his personality has enabled him to become a strong role model and a mentor for new officers and an advocate for victims. He has been a positive influence on the department culture and has been a consistent and dependable worker in the department. Cameron, on behalf of the city, we are very thankful for your 30 years of dedicated service and positive contributions that you've made to the police department in the city. And please accept my best wishes for a happy retirement. Uh, please give you this certificate of appreciation for your 30 years of dedicated service from December 3rd of 1990 through January 31st of 2021. Cameron, thank you so much. Have a great retirement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, we've been having too many of these retirements. Is there anybody left in your department? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to give an update on COVID-19 for Monday, January 18th. First of all, a review of the numbers. Uh, in positive cases, we increased by 273. 
Uh, we now have uh, 715 active cases. That's down 297 from a week ago. We have 11,350 recovered cases. That's up 376 from a week ago. And our hospital uh, pop population has uh, gone down from 14 to 12. Unfortunately, we've had a, a lot of deaths in the last week or so. Almost 10% of the deaths that we've seen throughout this COVID uh, pandemic came in the last week, two weeks. And we had uh, 12 more deaths and a total of 108 altogether. Uh, the negative tests have grown by another hundred, uh, other 752 up to 42,131. The trajectory of the numbers since New Year's has been steady, but with a burden rate of 610 per 100,000, the county is still at a very high ranking. The efforts of so many this time, at this time have reduced the strain on our hospital admissions, so please continue to wear a mask, wash and sanitize your hands often, and maintain social distance and avoid groups of people in your family, other, not in your family. The Wisconsin National Guard uh, testing site has averaged a little over 100 tests uh, each day last week. Uh, their testing will continue on Wednesdays and Fridays at the Sheboygan County Aging and Disability Resource Center in Sheboygan Falls. The state of Wisconsin has allocated uh, 607,000 vaccines to Sheboygan County. 373,000 have been shipped and 213,000 have been administered as of this morning to group A1 individuals, which include local hospitals and clinics. Nine nursing homes in Sheboygan have had their initial uh, clinic visit for staff and residents and account for over 600 of those vaccinations. It's anticipated uh, start date for assisted living facilities is January 25th. Public health is waiting for a definition of the 1B participants and the timeline for the rollout of the next phase of vaccinations from the state of Wisconsin. And just one other note, the uh, Sheboygan County uh, Warming Center is open and operating uh, warming center at St. Cyril Methodius Church, and that will be open through April 15th of this year. The purpose of the warming center is to provide safe temporary overnight shelter for adults over age 18 who may be homeless because of emergencies of any kind and who uh, will be housed in an overnight basis pending availability. The center uh, is able to accommodate a maximum of 40 guests and is supervised by uh, uh, between two and 10 volunteer staff members from local churches. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, this will include items 2.2 through 2.8. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Is there, thank you for that motion and support. Those items are before us. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll for passage. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 3.1 is RO number 122 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission to who is referred general ordinance number 29 of 2021 by Alderperson Donahue and RO number 116 of 2021 by the City Clerk granting the John Michael Kohler Art Center and its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of the 600 block of New York Avenue of the city of Sheboygan for the purposes of adding a second entrance sign. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
Ten ayes. Motion passes. Items 3.2 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 4.1 is resolution number 144 of 2021 by Alderpersons Donahue, Decker, Feldy, Ackley, and Savaglio condemning the rioting and destruction at the U.S. Capitol. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. As an initial matter, I, um, although I, I view this more as a direct referral uh, than an actual requirement to suspend the rules, given the timely nature of the matter and the need to express our concerns, I would move to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Hearing none, please proceed. Thank you. I will move to adopt the resolution. Thank you for that. Motion, is there a second? Second. Thank you very much for the three of them. Uh, that's before us for, for discussion. Seeing no other discussion, I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 4.2 is resolution number 145 of 2021 by Alderperson Zachley, Donahue, Boren, Savaglio, Felicki, Paneski, Feldy, Phillips, Sorensen, Mitchell, and Decker, commemorating the distinguished service of Lawrence Felton to the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I ask for suspension of the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in uh, favor, please. Well, let's see, we have the clerk has to call that roll. And that passes unanimously. Thank you. Items uh, 4.3 through 4.7 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 227 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To his referred resolution number 141 of 2021 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an agreement between the City of Sheboygan, Lakeland University, and the Kohler Credit Union regarding the 2021 Memorial Day Parade and recommends to adopt the resolution and amend the agreement to replace section uh, four parentheses H with the following. Hold harmless slash indemnification to the extent permitted by law. Launch shall hold harmless, defend and or indemnify Kohler Credit Union and the city from any and all claims, actions, suits and charges and awards, fines, labor disputes, charges or costs of any kind or character, including attorney's fees and court costs that arise or may arise out of launches, performance or non-performance of any term, obligation, service or condition set forth in this agreement. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution with the amended agreement. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Are there any questions on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 228 of 2021 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee, recommending that the Common Council grant alcohol beverage license number 3461 HCM Hospitality, uh, bar 43 at the Harbor Santa Marina, Matt Bauer agent, an extension until June 30th of 2021 to open for business. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and grant the extension. 
Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Dean, did you have a comment? No. Put in next one. Okay. And item 5.3 is RC number 229 for, of 2021 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance number 28 of 2021 by Alderpersons Decker and Sorensen reestablishing the bulkhead line from the north side of the Sheboygan River in the city of Sheboygan and recommends adopting the ordinance. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is RC number 230 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 31 of 2021 by Alderpersons Decker and Sorensen, amending Section 74-42 of the Municipal Code to allow the waiver of park rental fees for certain circumstances. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, that's before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under other matters authorized by law, I'll turn it over to City Attorney Adams. There's one item, item 7.1, which is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2021 and June 30, 2021. Thank you. That'll be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Next, uh, Alderperson Sorensen. All right. Seeing that we have exhausted the agenda, I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Aye. And, and aye. Just a reminder, aye. We, we do have a committee the whole meeting following this. So please stay on. Yes, so we'll take a short recess then and we stand adjourned for the city council meeting. <coughs>